can see your presentation. Everything is fine. Okay. Um, so we can see that the uh, surface micro cracks and initiation and growth and the thermal fatigue. Uh, so why we are studying uh, this? Because um, in many applications, we have the cracking of surfaces under some thermal loading. So that are uh, some rollers uh, or some other situations. And we have developed two two different models. So the first model is that uh, we developed is a uh, uh, model based on the double periodic um, representations of that cracks. And the second model is the model uh, which is based on the non-periodic um, uh, analysis of, of the problem. So uh, we used the boundary element method to uh, derive the solution of the problem because uh, it won't have an analytic solution and the boundary element method allows us to um, study crack growth. So we consider this equation, the executive law, we consider that of anisotropic elasticity and we uh, have the fundamental solutions written in the complex plane and standard du dual boundary element equations which are written at the end of the slide. So the first is a displacement boundary integral equation and the second is the uh, traction one. So we have to consider both because we have to consider the displacements at each side of the crack. Uh, so the sum symbol responds to the sum of um, functions on the opposite sides of, of the crack faces. And uh, the delta symbol um, corresponds to the um, uh, displacement discontinuity uh, on the crack faces, which is a, as a sort function that displacement discontinuity. Uh, so the next step, what we considered is a double periodic problem. So we considered some um, periodic lattice of, of cracks. Um, we assume that. And the, there are two periods, uh, omega-1 and omega-2, in different directions. Uh, and uh, mm, due to that periodicity, we assume that there is a translation symmetry of, of those sort functions, so the displacement discontinuity and traction discontinuity on the crack faces, which allowed us to obtain the mm, uh, dual boundary integral equations for the doubly periodic problem. And the kernels of, of these equations were represented in the form of double sums. Um, uh, these double sums can be evaluated to the doubly periodic functions that are the sigma, beta, and Weierstrass P function. Uh, thus, these kernels uh, can be um, evaluated uh, explicitly and can be used in the boundary element mode. Uh, uh, another question is that when we uh, sum that cracks, so we have to uh, use some uh, stresses for, for that we have to define some stresses and naturally we can define the average stresses and average strains. So we obtained some solutions to, to define that average strain and average stress, which can then be adopted to define the thermal fatigue loading. And besides that, we have used uh, special special shape functions to derive the stress intensity factors at the uh, tip of each crack and um, for uh, crack development for crack um, growth we use the c strain energy density um, factor and the paris law which defined as the growth of the crack and the, mm, the angle of, of, of its growth. Uh, now about the thermal fatigue. 
So we consider two models. The first one is depicted on the picture on the top. And so we consider the plate and we considered there are some nuclei. Uh, nuclei means that uh, at that point, the crack uh, of the elementary lens of 0 0.25 millimeters can initiate. Um, so the initiation of that crack was uh, defined by some, um, uh, was uh, developed based on the Monte Carlo miss. Uh, after the crack initiated, it can grow under the fatigue loading, and the thermal loading was reduced to some uh, mechanical loading uh, S0, uh, which is determined based on the curves of thermal fatigue of that steel 25 from one molecule in one volt from. Um, so that was the first model. Uh, cracks initiated and grow in, in such a way. Uh, another model was made based on that doubly periodic representation. So what's that model about? So we can see some cracks um, and the period, uh, the periodicity. The period is assumed to be to be the same in x1 and x2 directions. And that period uh, also defines the um, cracks density. So how many cracks are distributed in some um, area? And that was a parameter for another model. So um, uh, that Monte Carlo method used in the first model was also used in the second to define the cracks density. So to define the dependence of the distance between cracks uh, on uh, the number of thermal fatigue cycles. And also the loading was applied that was loading as zero, uh, which was also the same as in the previous model. So which defined the uh, thermal fatigue loading on, on the sum. And both models were um, uh, uh, introduced into the boundary element code to, to determine some parameters, which I'll talk later. So the first model, here we have the crack growth, so some cracks have initiated at different different points. They are uh, plotted here with, with lines of different color, and some cracks have, have grown. However, here we cannot see that growth because the growth is um, much less than that initiation of the cracks. Here, only 11 thousands of cycles were considered. So on this step, the crack growth is, is not so important and uh, most important is the initiation of that uh, cracks on, on the surface of our sun. Uh, another model which was used as a double periodic model and here we can see how, how the crack is growing. So each crack is growing in such way and the, and the different here we have considered also the anisotropic plate and we consider the different directions of um, main uh, axis of orthotropy of that sample and we can see how how that orthotropy of the sample defines the crack growth and when the uh, that orthotropy angle is zero so we can see that the crack starts to grow on an angle of approximately 70, 70 degrees. Uh, and that growth is, is stable. That's why we can consider um, isotropic and orthotropic materials in a, within this model of dumped periodic fatigue cracks. So we had considered that steel, and that steel is uh, isotropic material. Uh, the first graph is for dependence of overall damage on the number of cycles. It depends also on the mm, stresses. When stresses are lower, so megapascals and the stresses are higher, so the damage is caused um, on, on, when the stresses are higher, the damage is caused on lower levels of the number of cycles. And when we mm, analyzed those two models, we have obtained mainly the same dependencies of the mean crack lens on the logarithm of cycles is depicted on, on 
uh, the picture on the right, and we can see that the cracks are initiating and the growth of cracks begin when the number of cycles is, is bigger than uh, uh, a thousand or, or ten thousands or one hundred thousands for different for different loading. So when the loading is uh, one hundred megapascals, the uh, crack lens uh, plays um, uh, big role when when uh, the low, uh, the number of cycles exceed one one hundred thousand cycles uh, and also we have determined the, the density of of that cracks uh, depending on the loading intensity and uh, the number of cycles and here it's, it's depicted so the density begins to grow after some some critical number of cycles is is reached and before before it's reached the uh, crack length and the crack density is not growing in such an extraordinary way as that here. So it has no asymptotics and before some critical, critical number of cycles. And um, these results were compared with some experimental ones, and we have some correlation within these results. However, some additional studies should be made to proceed with um, with um, determination of that equivalent stresses as zero, which was used in, in that model. So we have to, to make some additional experiments for, for that correlation. So thank you for your attention.